You got beef with my buffalo, homie? All right, what I'm gonna talk about in this video is the comparison of grass-fed beef to buffalo. But before we start talking about that comparison, I have to break down conventionally raised beef in comparison to grass-fed beef. Why? Because the fatty acid profile is completely different and it simply has to do with how the cow is raised. So when we look at conventionally raised beef, meaning most of the beef that you're gonna see in the grocery store, the cow is born, it's raised out on the pasture for a little bit, and then it's brought into a facility where it's just fed a bunch of grain, like corn and soy. Very controlled diet that is lacking a lot of nutrition. Now, this ends up being a very bad thing, and I'll explain that later on when I start breaking down the fatty acid composition. But essentially, they're fed a lot of antibiotics, they're given a lot of drugs, they're given a lot of inoculations just to keep them healthy because they're in closed confines, they're actually eating food that isn't nutritious and they need to have their immune system supported artificially. So there's a lot of negative things there. But then when we look at grass-fed, okay, grass-fed, they're just living off the grass, okay? They're eating off of a pasture. And a lot of times, they're never touching grain at all. So even when it finally comes time to go to slaughter, they've just been eating grass the whole time. Now, how does this play a part in the fatty acid composition? A lot of it has to do with the omega-6 and omega-3 profile. You see, soy and grain is super, super high in what's called omega-6, and that's gonna translate directly into the meat that we consume. You see, conventionally raised cows are gonna end up containing a lot more residue of the antibiotics, of the medications, and even of the poor nutritional food that they're given when it comes down to being slaughtered. So how does a grass-fed cow do a lot better? Well, for one, it doesn't have the high omega-6 profile, but it also has a lot of what is called CLA, conjugated linoleic acid. What CLA is, is a very critical fatty acid that allows us to utilize fat a little bit more efficiently for fuel. Now there was one study that was even done by the Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that those that took CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, on average lost about a quarter pound per week, essentially losing a pound per month just by adding CLA into their diet compared to a control that ate the exact same thing but did not add the CLA. So you can see the benefit right then and there metabolically of consuming grass-fed beef versus conventionally raised beef. In addition to having a less ideal fatty acid composition, conventionally raised beef also has a lot of high bacteria levels. Simply put, the grain is sort of a cesspool of bacteria. And also these cattle are raised in an environment that's very unsanitary because they're close together. They're not free roaming. They're not just out on pasture. They're in close, confined areas that are making it much easier for them to contract illness, which means when it comes down to the consumer's plate, more instances of E. coli and things like that. So we definitely want to be cognizant of that. So even though grass-fed beef technically contains a little bit less fat because it's leaner, it has two to six times the amount of healthy fats as conventional beef, meaning it has the omega-3 versus the omega-6. It doesn't have the high levels of antibiotics and veterinary medications but it's also just flat out more ethical too. Now let's break it down to the comparison with buffalo. So you've isolated that grass-fed beef is better than conventional, so now let's move on. Okay, so buffalo is significantly leaner than grass-fed beef. Very, very true. However, one thing that is absolutely amazing about buffalo meat is that the USDA has guidelines that they cannot have medications administered to them like traditional cows can. Meaning they're not going through the same hormone treatment, they're not going through the same antibiotic treatment, and generally speaking, they are almost always grass-fed. So you're much more likely to find a high-quality buffalo meat than you even are a high-quality grass-fed beef meat. Because even if it's grass-fed, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's organic. Either way, whether it's coming down to beef or buffalo, there's one thing you need to be extremely, extremely cognizant of. And that's the fact that sometimes, even when the label says that it's grass-fed, they've still been grain-finished. So when you're buying buffalo meat, it's super important that you find one that is 100% grass-fed. Because oftentimes, they'll trick you with the label. They'll say it's grass-fed, then the last six months, they'll switch them over to grain to try to add a lot of weight to the buffalo. This way, they're gonna get better market price. So you have to make sure that you pay very close attention to that. I wanna give you a quick breakdown of some of the differences in calories, protein, and fat from beef to buffalo, just so you have a snapshot glance. A four ounce serving of beef filet mignon is about 180 calories, whereas a four ounce serving of bison filet mignon is about 120 calories. 
When it comes to protein, a three ounce serving of beef top sirloin is about 23 grams, whereas a three ounce serving of bison top sirloin is about 24 grams. When it comes to fat, an eight ounce serving of beef ribeye is about 50 grams of fat and 20 grams of saturated fat, whereas that same eight ounce serving of a bison ribeye has 22 grams of fat and 10 grams of saturated fat. So you can see it's significantly less fat overall and a better ratio of those mono and polyunsaturated fats versus saturated fats. So what's the answer? Which one is better? It's all going to come down to what you need as an individual. Buffalo is going to be significantly leaner. It's got a higher level of trace minerals, generally because there's not the adulteration of adding other antibiotics that can break down minerals. So you're gonna have higher levels of things like selenium, which is really good for your thyroid. But beef, you're gonna have a little bit more fat content. So if you're doing something like a ketogenic diet, you might wanna go for the grass-fed beef because you're gonna simply get more fat. But when it comes down to bison, it's really, really good for a general overall healthy lifestyle that's gonna be a lower fat, lower cholesterol approach. So again, it comes down to what your purpose is when it comes to it. But one thing is for certain, stay away from that conventionally raised beef that's loaded with the soy, loaded with the corn, and is certain to throw off your omega-6 to omega-3 profiles, which we all know can cause an increase in inflammation and leave you feeling like a load of garbage. As always, keep it locked in here to cut through the fluff, cut through the noise, and figure out what's gonna work best for your family, best for your business, and best for you in the kitchen. I'll see you soon.